Hi everybody, Pedro here from PGX Continuing Journey Channel and to all of those who are celebrating Happy Pride Month! Today's this is the first day of Pride Month and you know, June is when we acknowledge hopefully the LGBT yeah, I'm beginning again. LGBTQ plus community will be acknowledged the way they deserve to be. So I want to share with you in my video a few things about my coming out. A few things and link it all together. So first of all, when I came out as gay in 2014, no, I was I had just moved here with my aunt because I was going through some of my toughest times my darkest times ever both um, financially and uh, you know I was changing jobs I was evicted from my apartment um, um, I lost I lost friendships I was trying to build no family from my mom's side abandoned me so and I came out as gay at that time because I was like, I cannot be living in, I needed to be me for a change. And the reason why I felt abandoned by most of my mom's side of the family was because you know, I really, now I have two sisters who are twins and one half sister. I rarely see them. Now, mom, I rarely spend time with and the other and all of them, all three of my sisters have their own kids and husbands. And at least one of them anyway, to my knowledge. So anyway, at the, no, at the time that I was losing the weight and I became a lifetime with, with Weight Watchers the first, um, during the first eight years of my journey, you know, I was slowly but surely re trying to rebuild my relationship with my sisters and but there was a catch I had to follow religious beliefs that I did not believe in and and they were against gays as I recall and and at the time that I came out I was not happy at the time with my living condition conditions I should say and um I was I almost faced homelessness so it was really the darkest time of my life at that time you know having trying to overcome the obstacles that um that was going to down my late grandmother was very overprotective of me trying to build a social life and of course I could not come out at that time because I would have she would have definitely killed me for sure I would have been dead before both of my late grandparents passed away and of course my mom passed away in 2012 both of my late grandparents my late grandmother died in 2006 and my late grandpa died in 2007 and my dad passed away in 1977 so I really and I unfortunately as far as my dad was concerned I never really had a chance to even know him so that to me explains why Father's Day is the most emotional day of the year I'll get to that in a moment but first what I started to say was most when my late grandmother was overprotecting me and I was going through my darkest time ever in 2014 much of the stuff that the world was going through when we had that pandemic was nothing new to me so now my question is so I like to look at myself as a survivor a thriver a fighter and and believer that the journey goes on no matter what happens and and of course in June the what is it ninth on my calendar the 18th to be exact is Father's Day the most emotional day of the entire year for me however however 
I'm going, I am not going to look back at my, my late grandpa or the father I never had. I'm going to look down, reflect on my heavenly father and the family he has blessed me with. Because when I came out, as I said, I was not happy with the living conditions at that time. However, over the, the past um, nine years after coming out, my my living current living conditions is, has had its ups and downs. And it's not easy from time to time. <laughs> And I, to this day, I don't have a time for a social life because, no, I'm busy with work. I'm busy helping out the family here in, the house, in this house. And I'm also trying to save money. So, but I've learned a lot over the past nine years. So, and I built a family out of, and I built a, a family out of this. And, it, and to this day, is still a process. So, Father's Day, as I said, I'm going to reflect on my Heavenly Father. So, shut up. Let me tell my computer to shut up for a moment. So, anyway, I'm going to reflect on my Heavenly Father and the family he has blessed me with. No, I'm, I'm, learning, I'm continuing to learn how to cook. I'm not going to, I will never make it a chef. And, you know, there are some thing, new skills that, to me, I was I would still be a nervous wreck over, but um, as with the time I was losing the weight and attending a gym and trying all kinds of different classes like um like um spin class and swimming and what have you, I tried and I didn't fail. I tried, but it didn't wasn't working for me. So next time I plan to go to a swimming pool is when the family and I. Plan to see my uncle's house in New Jersey. You know, one of the uncles who served in the army, who I give a shout out to, and because his house has a community pool in there, and I love it there. So anyway, so I'm gonna so fusing all of that together, and this is also one week since we lost a true survivor who I really looked up to over the years. Her she was born Anim Anime Bullock, but she was professionally known as Tina Turner. Tina Turner. She came out of an abusive relationship, and she knew what it was like not to have um, her own blood support her. And she was dealing with a lot of abuse and a lot of power from her then-husband, Ike Turner. When she left his ass and... And she struggled the way she did. She managed to became a huge powerhouse. Eight years after divorcing Ike with her 1984 album Private Dancer. And believe me, this past week I was blasting that movie based on the song and her book. What's the love got to do with it? You know, Angela Bassett and Lawrence Fishburne should have both won the Oscar. Because their portrayal... Of Ike and Tina Turner was so realistic, so convincing. So now, how do I fuse all of this together? Here we go. I am at peace with where my life is right now. You know, the neighborhood, the family that my Heavenly Father has blessed me with. And I can still be myself. Although they don't like the idea of me wearing my pants too tight because from time to time my bore show. But, hey, I gained 65 pounds during the pandemic, so some of it is too tight. But there are certain thing underwear that I shouldn't be wearing. So, But that's a whole different story. I'm not going to turn this into an X-rated video here. So don't get any ideas, folks. What I'm saying is... Pride Month for me is being at peace with who I am, with my identity. And you know, even if I only have one or two friends in my real life, I'm okay with that. No, as I as I pointed out in previous, as I pointed out, as this at this point in my journey, it is also like 2006 all over again. 
I'm gonna continue rebuilding. Hopefully I'll meet new people or bump into friends I met throughout from the neighborhood in recent years. I haven't seen most of them since the start, since the pandemic. So hopefully no pride is not gonna be about um posing in sexy posing in sexy on the words and this isn't yeah. What I'm, what I'm trying to say. Excuse me for being fresh. Let me get to the point. June is as Pride Month will be about my pride, being proud of who I am, finally being in my own identity. Even if I'm not dating anybody right now, even if I never find a special man to marry, well, I'm at peace with being single. I'm at peace with my living conditions right now. I'm at peace with the family my Heavenly Father has blessed me with. And I am at peace with this point in the journey. I recently ordered from Old Navy some new shorts and extra large shirts because I do want to get into clothes that I can fit in, comfortable, look good in, even if I, have a, I still have 57 more pounds to get rid of. 58 more pounds, yeah. 58, 57 more pounds to get rid of. I don't know how William's going to turn out, but I'll have to keep you all posted on that. In the meantime, Happy Pride to all of those who are celebrating, and remember, love yourself for who and what you truly are. Peace out.